Princess Tutu. A fractured fairy tale for the ages, a duck is made into a girl, and then a magical girl, when the author Drosselmeyer sees that his story is failing to progress. Princess Tutu is tasked with restoring the shards of the prince's shattered heart, which in moving the story along will also bring despair, heartache, and the return of the evil raven. As Tutu restores the prince's heart, we meet characters that seek to manipulate the prince, either to keep him as their own, or to halt the story and avoid their written fate. As a fairy tale, it knows what you expect of it, and will deliver in spades. The soundtrack is largely composed of classical music, be it waltzes, symphonies, or, yes, works out of famous ballet. It manages to be cute without being candy-coated, which is a rare feat, especially in today's market. The atmosphere is dark, but full of hope, which helps to reinforce the theme of destiny. The series' ability to play with common tropes and deliver a fulfilling experience is not to be understated. Fear not, for no matter what Duck may go through, you can rest assured that this is a fairy tale, and everyone will live happily ever after. Chrono Crusade. My personal favorite, and for good reason. This is a well-made anime. In the 1920s, the first world war behind us, and the Great Depression and World War II on the horizon, Rosette Christopher and her demonic partner Chrono vanquish devils as agents of the Magdalene Order. We join them on their demon hunting adventures and watch them rescue a girl named Asmaria, who has powers that are said to have come from God himself. During this time, one of Chrono's old acquaintances, Ion, sets forth his plan to make heaven into earth, and the earth into heaven. If you wished anime took religion seriously, this is your show. If you like good dubs, this is also your show. Mm-hmm! Ain't it the Nats whistle? If you like watching well-written characters suffer for each other's sake, this is definitely your show. As their backstory gets revealed, you learn just how much Rosette and Chrono care about one another, and how far they're willing to go for each other's happiness. It ain't a sappy romance, it's a deep and powerful bond. I watch this one every year because of how special it is to me. I hope it's worth your time as well. His and Her Circumstances, or Kare Kano. Yukino Miyazawa is not your average high school student. While she appears to be a preppy Miss Perfect and a role model for her peers, Yukino is a calculating, self-proclaimed queen of vanity who lives only to hear other people sing her praises. These hopes are dashed when a new student, Soichiro Arima, steals the spotlight by outperforming her on the opening exam. Her one-sided rivalry turns to curiosity, and the two eventually fall in love. But not without its share of roadblocks. Arima is adopted and puts pressure on himself to make his parents proud. He's emotionally stunted, and Yukino is too to a degree. They both think logically, and to their detriment, love ain't logical. This is an honest and brutal show about young love and the pains that come with it. Directed expertly by Hideaki Anno of Evangelion fame, with tons of expressive shots, we watch Yukino and Arima grow into more complete people as they spend more and more time with each other. Similar to Evangelion, the show runs into grievous budget issues. Episode 18 is my canon ending. It's so cute! It is so sweet! I can't stand it! Here we have Outlaw Star, the only Toonami show we're going to talk about for this panel. But we decided to include it because it's awesome, and because it was quickly overshadowed by other shows. Outlaw Star is, in the best way possible, anime comfort food. You sit down, you watch it, you throw at the adventure, and when the episode ends, you can decide if you want to watch more or stop right there. You can watch it at your own pace, and it's all for you. In a world full of Luke Skywalkers, Gene Starwind is a Han Solo, as he shoots first, grabs asses later, and if there's someone still alive, he'll maybe ask a question. So in spite of his complete awesomeness, Gene Starwind is actually afraid of one thing. He's afraid of space, as his father was brutally murdered before his eyes in his very first trip in orbit. In spite of his crippling fear, he desperately wishes to find his fortune across the stars, and the opportunity of a lifetime falls into his lap when he meets an outlaw named Hot Ice Hilda. Little does he know that his adventure will take him to the greatest treasure in the universe. 
and we haven't even gotten to the ship yet. If you are sick and tired of the conventional anime cliches regarding space, Outlaw Star is pretty damn refreshing. Penny Pony Dash Penny Pony Dash is the logical conclusion of the LOL SO RANDOM genre. It's haphazard, irreverent, and full of parody. If you came for a plot, you came to the wrong anime, bucko. The setup is as follows. Rebecca Miyamoto, that's Becky to you, graduated from MIT at age 10. She took a teaching job in Japan. Hijinks ensue. What are their names? Who cares? Penny Pony Dash sure doesn't. Over time, you'll grow to recognize them by their defining tropes. The angry ginger girl with the big forehead is my waifu, by the way. One of the great strengths of this anime is how the girls are put in ridiculous situations and are free to act as they please. This is not an intellectual show. It's the anime equivalent of Skittles. You're binging on sugar and waiting for them to break the fourth wall again. See you later! Another key aspect of the show is how every time a scene or camera changes, there's something new for you to look at. Nothing stays the same from shot to shot. If you liked Excel Saga and Azumanga Daio, and wish somebody threw them in a blender, Penny Pony Dash would be the result. It's highly unique and guaranteed to never bore you. Dash in today.